I also have an ax readily accessible. Not so much for cutting wood, but just in case. Hey! If you own an RV, you're gonna need some tools when you're on the road. If you're traveling full time, you're really gonna need some tools because when you break down and you will break down, things will break, you're not going to necessarily have somebody right there to help you. You might be out of cell phone service, far away from anything from any repair shops, and you gotta get something fixed. Someone help me! Even if you're not traveling full time, if you're just a weekender, you're sometimes gonna need to fix some things. So right now I'm gonna share with you the tools that we carry with us when we're on the road. And stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you the one thing that we have not yet purchased that uh, we, we really need to buy. Eee. I thought about organizing it and making it all pretty for you, but let me just pull it out and show you exactly what we have so you can get a realistic look of what it looks like having tools. In the beginning I kept everything in a plastic bin or two, but I recently upgraded to this toolbox, which has most of the stuff, or at least a lot of the stuff that I need readily accessible. It's this Husky toolbox here. There's a lot of brands that make stuff that's similar, but this is great because I can just open these doors here in my garage and get to pretty much anything. This is what's in the toolbox, pretty basic stuff. We've got a knife, tape measure, Allen wrenches. This is a cable crimper for that solar installation I did. This was super helpful. You have to have that. If you're trying to connect solar parts like on your roof solar panels, if you don't have that, it's not gonna work. Pliers don't work. We've tried that. In the description, there's a link on how we did our solar. And of course, we have screwdrivers here and wrenches here, along with basic pliers and a crescent wrench. And we had a couple backup spark plugs for the generator. Next, you are for sure going to need a socket set. Any basic set will do. I finally sprung for a good one from DeWalt. This thing's great because it has a couple wrenches, all the major size sockets. It's got the screwdriver thing with some bits in here and it's got these Allen wrenches. So it's got a lot of, a lot of what you'll need. The one tool that I've used more than any other tool ever in the history of my life over the course of a year is this one. It's a DeWalt 20 volt drill. It was featured heavily in my prior video about screening your RV. In fact, I got a, I got a new screen right there. Leela helped me put it on there. This thing is good for everything, and the thing that is in it most of the time is what viewers let me know is called a Robertson bit. It's that square bit that you use to screw in all those screws in just about every RV that have that square head, and it's a common size. I think it's a number two, and they are everywhere. Another tip is you want to get a box of those Robertson screws so that you can fix your RV when things go awry. In fact, you might even see right here, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see right here. I, uh, at the behest of an RV repair guy, I screwed all of the molding it all around the RV with these Robertson screws. They're self-tapping screws, so you can screw them right into the side and it's holding this stuff in. In the last couple of weeks, I've used this several times, once to reattach the shower thing in there, once to screw in some molding right there, and again, to uh, hang that screen door all the way. This thing is invaluable. You can get any of them. DeWalt's kind of a good brand. This is a drill, but they make an impact driver, which is for driving screws, but I drive them with this as well. You just have to be gentle with the trigger. Listen, gentle. Yeah, it'll go slow. You just have to, just gotta be gentle. But you're gentle. It came with these four boxes. Three of them are bits, one are drills, and pretty much everything I've ever needed is in here. Now, sometimes when you're in an RV, you get specialty weird stuff that breaks. In fact, or stuff that you need to do. In fact, I installed a dryer in here, so I had to borrow a four inch hole saw to drill a four inch hole in the side of the RV. That was, that was pretty terrifying. So at times you'll need specialty things, but you know, square head, Phillips, flat head, drills, all that stuff's in here. And it's most of what you would need 90% of the time. If you've watched our channel at all, you know that we have renovated the inside of this RV. The outside is clearly not renovated. It looks terrible, but the inside renovated the whole thing. And during that time, we used a lot of other tools, but they were mostly my brother-in-law Dan's and our friend Lisa's tools. We would go park at their houses and work on things. And they had you know, shops with all the big saws and stuff that you need to do major renovations. In fact, we're going to show you how we did some of the things coming up. We're going to show you how that Leela installed this penny tile with her friend Lisa and they had some you know some bigger fancier tools for doing that but we're going to show you how we did that and how you can install real penny tile in your RV for your backsplash in your kitchen and it looks it looks fabulous if you want to see that go ahead and post that in the comments below back here we've got I didn't break it Whew. 
We've got a level, just basic level. It's like what, two feet long. And it can help you if you're trying to see if you're actually level. Even before you put your jacks down, you can just go, hey, how far out are we? Are my jacks gonna be able to, hit, gonna be able to handle it? And other times when you're working on things in the RV, it's a straight edge and it's a level, it's great. We also have this straight edge right here, which is a, a ruler too, or a yardstick or, is it a yardstick? Yeah, it is, it's 36 inches, so it's, it's a yard. Oh, and on the other side, it's got those uh, centimeter things that we should be using more here in this country, but for some reason, we're not yet. I also have an ax readily accessible. Not so much for cutting wood, but just in, hey! Just in case I need to, you know, defend myself. But in all seriousness, I really wouldn't use the ax for cutting firewood and stuff because it makes a lot of noise. People don't like that ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. What I would do is just, uh, I would just break out this, usually around 10 o'clock at night. Here's Johnny. People, people love it. This box right here contains stuff that I would use for plumbing or electrical. And your plumbing or electrical or both are going to give you issues at some point in time. Now, I installed solar with the help of my brother Roy, I mean, mostly Roy did it, in this thing from scratch. And one thing you for sure are gonna need for solar installation or for any electrical issues, and we've had others, is, is this. This is a digital multimeter from Klein Tools. A bunch of people make them. It looks like this, in case you're wondering what a multimeter looks like. It's worth getting one that's a little bit better. It's got this little clampy thing so you can check amps on cables. And I used this extensively when troubleshooting the installation of the solar stuff and at other times when things are going bad and you're wondering if, oh, why is this lighted? Is there power getting to it or is it the light? You know, it's pretty simple to use some of the basic stuff. It looks all complicated if you've never used this before, but you're probably gonna want a multimeter and when you need it, you'll, you'll just Google, how do you use it? And you go, how can I check if there's power coming out of here and how do I not hurt myself? In this toolbox, we have other things such as wiring black and white for helping wire lights, little extensions, stuff like that. Use this many times. I've got wing nuts because when you gotta attach wires, this is the easiest way to do it. I have wire strippers right there because when you got wire, you gotta, you gotta strip it. And I have this extra kind of kit of things that I used for hooking up the solar because you never know when something might need replacing. Speaking of, I installed these lights into our RV and these are 12 volt light bulbs. We're gonna give you a whole video on that. Kind of, if you wanna see that, hit subscribe. In fact, that's my bedside light. And this is Leela's bedside light. Notice that it's broken because, you know, RVs are rolling earthquakes. I'm gonna replace that one right there and show you how you can put lights that look like that or those first ones I showed you in your RV. The RV is plumbed with PEX, so I've got some PEX elbows and PEX clamps right here. And I haven't actually used them. There's actually been a minor leak under there forever. Whenever we shower, it seems. I even had a plumber come out and look at it. He couldn't find it. And I got this because I was gonna fix it, but I, anyway. I'm ready if I can find it. If it ever gushes, I'm, I'm ready. And I think I need a tool for this, pretty sure, which I thought I bought, but I, I don't know where it is. Right here in easy access, we have some WD-40 and some other lube, and we also have tape. We use blue tape all the time and duct tape. You're gonna want to, you're gonna want, you want to tape because when things break or, you know, windows, like we've had windows fall off, we've had a tape on, and we've literally had windows taped on as we're traveling down the road, and it just takes, it takes a lot of tape. And we've got thick tape too, this is the skinny stuff. You don't want that to hold your windows on. And I, for the record, I don't recommend using masking tape to hold your windows on, but have some tape, because you're gonna need it probably all the time. Here we've got a box of other stuff that we don't use as much. This is a backup connector cord because I've actually driven off more than once with this thing connected and broke it and had to replace it myself. A little bit uh, little bit embarrassing, but now we're ready in case I do it again, which is probably gonna happen. Here we've got ATF, which isn't a tool, but it's transmission fluid that goes for the hydraulic jacks. You're gonna need that sometimes. A grease gun for greasing various parts of the RV, such as the fifth wheel connector. If you wanna see more Leela in these videos, even the how-tos about tools, post more Leela in the comments below. And we also have different kinds of sealants and glues because sometimes stuff leaks. And we have several kinds of lubricant for lubricating the different parts of the RV. We got links for all this below. Now, I have no idea if there's any difference between the uh, the rubber seal conditioner, the slide out, and what's this one? 
the window and track stuff, it might all be pretty similar, but we use these and uh, Leela is pretty great at making sure that everything stays lubricated. I've got some fix a flat here in case of emergency. I have no idea if that would actually work for these things, but you know, just in case you can't get somebody there. And of course we have oil to replace oil in our generator, which I need to do again. In fact, there's a video linked right up there in case you want to change oil in your generator. It's probably pretty similar. It's a, it's a Cummins Onan. And then we've got an oil filter for the generator as well. We also have a backup water filter. And again, these aren't really tools, but these are things that are kind of with the tools. Another thing you might want to consider is a blower. This one is too big for the RV, but it's pretty great for stuff like this. And, and especially blowing off the slides. Something else you want is one of these, so you can install yeah, screens yeah, like see? this. I it, got my pool pool. I got my head pool. And Tiny Human has her hippo. We just installed a screen and it wasn't that big of a deal. You just need one of these things and some spline. One thing that we keep over on this side is basically a set of gah, channel locks and pliers because sometimes when we're trying to hook up the water, it gets stuck. And uh, you just a little gentle tug with these makes it a lot easier. And this thing is really annoying. And uh, in a video coming up, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix that so it doesn't keep hit me in the head. This was by no means an exhaustive list of all the things that we've used or that you may need, but this is kind of a good start. You don't need to buy them all at once, kind of buy them as you needed, but you probably do want to get some of the basic stuff like basic socket wrenches and for sure a drill with that square Robertson bit. We do keep a little baby pump in the RV, but this is inadequate. So the thing that we don't have that we do need is an air compressor. We're probably gonna get this one here. It's made for RVs. It's a little bit pricey, but super important you have something like this because if tires need inflating, this will take you 20 years. And we actually did buy a little baby compressor for like 30 bucks at Walmart one time. And it literally caught on fire the first time we tried to use it. Fire! It's fire! So getting those little junky, tiny ones, it's not gonna work for tires that need 80 pounds of pressure. Just pony up and, and buy, buy this one. To see how we renovated our RV, go ahead and click on that link there. YouTube thinks you wanna watch that and hit subscribe right there so you stay current on all things Jones. We can't wait to share our adventures with you. Oh.